Alrighty, hey friends, how are you? Welcome, another one of our surprise Slant Alpha Adventures, live from Studio 5 just outside of Ocean City, Maryland. How are you? Good to see you on a rare Sunday evening stream. Sunday night stream, really, kind of late night getting started. We're just going to do a single hop, single leg here tonight, just to make sure that I'm fully up and running in this aircraft and uh, know what I'm doing. We're going to fly in the Midway Monday event tomorrow. I'm sure that's going to be pretty busy up in the Chicago area, Chicago Air TCC. And so I just wanted to get one more flight. I've done a couple flights in it uh, offline. I wanted to get one more flight in under my belt on the network. And matter of fact, I was going to chase down some vets in air traffic control for this little trip. And uh, well, we had some when I started and then we no longer do, which I will grab the VAT spy map and show you. Hang on one second. I'm still kind of working out how to move the mouse to get from one screen to another uh, in the three screen setup I currently have here. Um, but yeah, we had SoCal and Los Angeles Center when I started the flight prep and now we have neither. So uh, it's okay. We're going to go from John Wayne Airport up to Santa Barbara and we're going to fly one of the Los Angeles tech routes and I'll go over all of that stuff in just a moment on how to come up with those routes. But look, Guys, it's the A2A Comanche, much anticipated. We, I mean, we, we, our jaw hit the floor when they did that teaser demo video uh, out at Flight Sim Expo, and I've uh, just been drooling over it ever since. I was a first day buyer of this product, and yet I still feel like now I am late to the party here almost a week later, uh, as so many other streamers have already had this thing up and about on their live streams and uh, you know I always like to take that extra time to make sure I'm a little bit familiar with the airplane know what I'm doing um, and uh, and can put on a good show with it so I, I do I'm a little more more cautious in that regard but I do kind of feel like uh, like I said late to the party is I guess the best way to say it but figured I'd get it on stream for you tonight we'll do one of these little trips just up the uh, California coast and Three then years. we'll hopefully be ready to uh, take it up to Chicago for you tomorrow where we will definitely have that Hi. same air traffic control as part of the Midway Monday event. Man, a whole bunch of folks to say hi to in the stream and a lot of stream activity there for a few for a few moments ago, so please let me scroll back through and recap that. We've had uh, our friends He Drippy and Akronerd stop into the chat. Nam106 is here, marveling at the Sunday surprise, as am I. Good Fixins is here. Bonus stream indeed. Jeffrey B. As, wow, that's a three-month sub resubscription from Jeffrey B. Thank you. I can't believe that's been that long. That is crazy. Well, thank you for the continued support of the channel. Uh, we are, uh, I'll talk more in detail about the uh, monthly raffles that we do on this channel, especially for any of you that might be new to the stream tonight. Um, well, we just got, we got a little off sync with those monthly raffles. We do them toward the end of each month, and we didn't get to do them in June, so we just last stream did the June drawings in the middle of July. I, I said three months? No, I, you know, you're right. I, I did mean three years. 36 months. I'm looking at 36. You said three years. I saw the thing that said 36 months, and boy, bleh, 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 just fell out of my mouth. But no, 36 months, three years. Yeah, thank you very much for that continued support, Jeffrey. That's amazing. Um... But anyway, yeah, so, um... It's finger licking good. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so the continued support of the channel in terms of the subscriptions is truly, truly appreciated. We've got two monthly raffles that we do on this stream. We're gonna be, uh, we're, we're not gonna have a July raffle. We're gonna just roll the entries into August because we just did the, did the June one a few days ago. So, uh, but we'll be back on schedule for those, back in sync with those on, uh, for our, our August schedule once I get that published. And we'll let you know what date uh, that drawing is going to be toward the end of August, as we do toward the end of most every month. Uh, who else do I need to say hi to? Hi to here. We have Peaches the Burb, and that was a resubscription as well. Thank you very much for that. Wind Tank is here. And uh, Fireheart Macbeth has said hello. Hope I caught everybody there. If I missed you, it certainly was not uh, intentional. Kitty Monster is here saying it's a pleasant surprise. You went a pleasantly surprised 2319 announcement there. All right, very good, guys. Well, this is the A2A Comanche. I'm going to kind of walk you through the cockpit, and I'll walk you through the control assignments that I've made here on my Honeycomb Alpha and Bravo to uh, prepare myself for this and come up with some 
somewhat creative control assignments that I'll talk about it's here in just bearings, a moment. Um, real quick, oh, Melvin Leroy has stopped in as well. Good gracious, this is going to be a pretty well-attended stream for something that I threw together at the last minute. All right, guys, well, that's good. I'm happy to see it. And uh, as, as we mentioned before, live from Studio 5, the fifth different studio that I've done this broadcast from, and, uh, man, the, the house is coming together. We had a very, very busy but productive weekend. Really starting to feel like we're settling in. We've got everything... Uh, settled and good to go with the homestead down in uh, the southern part of the county, and I'm ready to ready to go ahead and unload that uh, maybe as early as this coming Friday. So yeah, things are good. Things are progressing. Been bu very busy. Uh, we're all exhausted, but I figure I I did want to take the uh, time to do one quick uh, one quick flight here. Um. Anyway, so the route that we are doing is from Santa. So from I'm sorry, from uh, John Wayne. Santa Ana, um, but uh, John Wayne is how it's commonly known, going up to Santa Barbara. Now, you'll see this is a pretty convoluted-looking route. Where did I come up with this route? Well, in Los Angeles, when you're flying within the Los Angeles Tracon area, uh, the SoCal Tracon area in particular, they have what these called tech routes, terminal en route control routes. So these routes intentionally stay out of sensor airspace, and that's a way that uh, Los Angeles kind of keeps their centers from getting overwhelmed with traffic when they don't need to. Uh, this keeps general aviation traffic uh, primarily in the TRACON control without having to uh, take on the additional burden of switching up to a center controller and then switching back. So if you just Google ZLA Tech Routes, it's, it is on the Los Angeles ARTCC website as well, but uh, just Z Google's uh, Tech Routes, T-E-C uh, Routes, and it, it generally pops right up. Uh, you put your origin and destination. I think the K is optional here. So if we go, oops, uh, SNA, probably works either way, to SBA. And you get a bunch of different routes here. And you see this is the name of the route. And it, it, it does have a name, a pronounced name. I don't know what it is. The C-Stop 21 or something. I don't know. Coastal something, Coastal P. No idea. Coastal Prop Route 21, Coastal Prop Route 22, not sure. Um, oh my goodness, we got some gift subs going out. I will come back to those. That is awesome. Thank you, Jeffrey, for the continued support. Wow, that's great. Uh, good fixings is <laughs> encouraging Melvin to get uh, loaded up and following us. Kenny Monster. Oh, you too, Jeffrey B and Kenny Monster. Yeah, good fixings is trying to get a conga line going. Yeah, it's cool. I, I, I saw someone else is loaded in down here. Uh, I think that's a you good fixings, but uh, but yeah, no, you guys don't feel compelled. It's uh, it's fine. This is just going to be a little quick hop. Um, anyway, so these routes come up, and then um, you can figure out which one applies to you. Uh, in this case, you know, if the class of aircraft is a P or a Q, well, down here it tells you what's what. Uh, jet is J is a jet. M is a turboprop. Um, if your cruise speed's one ninety or higher. A P is a prop, a non-jet cruise speed 190 or higher. Um, and, then, and then Q is a non-jet cruise speed 189 knots or less. Cruise speed here in the Comanche is about 150 knots, which registers as 170 miles an hour. So this Quebec designation is going to be the one that we're looking for. So this eliminates these two. It puts us on the 21 or the, or the 22. I... Um, I basically, this is the slightly simpler one, so I kind of just copied and pasted that in to Sky Vector. This is what it looks like. And really, honestly, we want to go to the world low. And it doesn't look too bad. It comes uh, straight up to uh, Seal Beach and then out here to uh, this point. I guess it's called Hermo. Oh, it's, it's just the Victor 23. So straight out here to this point called Hermo and then up to the uh, Los Angeles VOR and then Victor 299 out here this way and you'll notice at this point we are not on an airway however we are on a marked radial so the 289 would be this airway here the victor 25 but 282 even though it's not specifically an airway it does allow you to go direct to that next point even if you don't have a gps because it's it is marked as that on the chart 282 radial on 26 miles is a direct to quang there and then that quang is the last point at that point we're within the tracon area for Santa Barbara and the uh, approach controller there, if there was one on, would then vector us in the rest of the way toward our uh, final approach course. 
Um, so those tech routes, like I said, they're basically it's like standard general aviation routing or low altitude routing uh, that keeps you out of center's airspace for these shorter hops within the uh, SoCal Tracon area. So that's what it is. Terminal en route control, meaning that you don't have to go any higher than an approach and departure controller to, uh, to get from origin to destination. Hope that makes sense. All right, so Jeffrey B. gave it a five gift sub bomb. Thank you very much for that, Jeffrey B., and I hope those of you who are the beneficiaries of that generosity also said thank you. And if I can get my mouse back to where I need it to be, I'll scroll that back down. I know, Kenny says it's getting crazy in here for an impromptu stream. Yeah, it absolutely is, but uh, guys, I'm glad that you were able to join on, on short notice. Uh, we pulled up the airport diagram for John Wayne. I'm parked over here in the vicinity of the FBO. And then uh, this is Santa Barbara where we're going to, and we'll kind of look at that in more detail once we get closer to it. Uh, again, so we can kind of close that up. We got our tech route. Uh, and by the way, one other cool thing about the tech route. Yeah, we got s more stuff beeping at me. Dr. Monocle with a resub as well. Santa Barbara has its own Tracon that uh, maybe borders SoCal. Yeah, so the, right, but the idea, is, Lauren, as I, as I mentioned before, is to uh, is to is to keep the workload of the center controllers down and not having to deal with all this general aviation or low altitude traffic. So that's hence the terminal en route. Um, so I pulled up the uh, John Wayne Aegis before the controller went offline. Uh, so there it is. Um, but the thing I was going to say about the tech routes is that when you file it, you can file it as just CSTP-21, if that was its name, uh, the, the Los Angeles controllers, when they see that, they know exactly what that translates to. It translates to uh, this whole string here. But that's just a shorthand for us and a shorthand for them. You can literally just file it just like that. Right. Trans-terminal. Yeah, trans-terminal route, says Lauren. Yeah, indeed. Concept still applies. That's what they. That's still what they want you to file in this case. All right, let's talk about the Comanche guys. This is a. Uh, you guys have seen all the hype. You've seen a bunch of other streamers fly it by now. Like I said, I've wound up being a little, just a little bit late to bring it to you, uh, because of my, you know, my own personal feeling of due diligence. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, open up the door. We would open up the door from the outside, obviously. Um, and we'll actually we'll open the windows as well because we'll be prepared to. Uh, have those open when we make our prop clear call, so we'll just open those up now in preparation. Uh, real quick, uh, to take you through the controls, um, and I know that you, I don't have the control cam here, but I did set up the first three levers on my um, Honeychrome Bravo. Mix is indeed the leftmost lever, just as it appears in the cockpit, so that's going to be an adjustment to figure that out. Um, this is the throttle, so it's to the center of that first set of three. And then this is the prop lever, and I did go for the vintage prop lever rather than the blue-handled one. Um, but that's going to be my third lever here. The, the second set of three levers, I got creative. The fourth one is carb heat, because that is something that you will use in this aircraft uh, more often than you use it in other aircraft in flights in 2020, which don't simulate the effects of carb icing as readily. But you do kind of have to have that at the ready, and so there that is. The next one over is the defroster. See that moving just under the uh, the uh, right hand seat yoke. Uh, it's the heater and the froster actually. So in case we have any uh, fog on the windshield or mist on the windshield, especially if we're flying in some rain, uh, we'll have that at the ready. And then the last one over is the cabin vents. In case it gets too warm in the cockpit, we'll be able to readily uh, adjust that as well. Um, the other thing I did, let's see, I haven't quite figured out the key bind for the master battery switch, um, but the second red switch is the uh, avionics, third red switch is the fuel pump, fourth red switch is the pitot heat, so that's all right there at the fingertips. All of the uh, light switches work as, as, uh, as indicated, the magneto switch works as indicated, uh, parking brake is on this first right hand black toggle over on the Bravo. Um, and then I put the cockpit light, the red cockpit light, uh, which is there. Oh, maybe, um, I don't know why that didn't work that time. 
Oh yeah, it is. It's working. So put that on the uh, the yoke button that I wasn't using otherwise, just in case, because it is going to be starting to get dark by the time we get to our destination tonight. So want to have cockpit lighting at the ready, just in case. Okay, so that is all that. I think that's going to be pretty good stuff. Uh, autopilot engage is on the Bravo. Autopilot disengage is. Uh... Oh wait a minute. Yeah, so autopilot on off is on the Bravo. Uh, autopilot disengage on the yoke works. Okay, you can see actually that's pressing there. I push it on the that works, and I uh, really haven't messed with the other switches, uh, the other autopilot functions because I haven't messed with the autopilot yet. So anyway, yep. <laughs> A few more folks have stopped into the chat. Good. Uh, so discovery video is here, and Lava Cow taking a test flight. Yeah, we are. Uh, Lava Cow. I, that, when I started the per, um, the uh, flight prep. We had uh, SoCal and the Los Angeles Center. They've evaporated on me. It's not impossible that somebody would pop on and uh, and control. It's, uh, it's still fairly early out there. It's, still, it's not even 7 o'clock West Coast time. So it's not impossible that we might see somebody else uh, pop on here and control this area before we, uh, before we take our leave. We've got the raid there from Grumpy Gordo. Grumpy Gordo, thank you so much for that. We've got Nerd Bark and uh, C-Sim live. Saying hi. Yep, indeed. Thank you so much for that raid. And we are just getting ready to take this uh, A2A Comanche up for our first on-stream test flight here in Southern California. Okay. Let's go. I, uh, I said we we're going to be off by... It's we're going to be taxiing by quarter after and airborne by 25 after. So we will... Uh, do our best to uh, to adhere to that. We got the follow there from CB29, and Johnny Kaput is back with us this evening as well. Cool deal, guys. All right, very good. Um, let's get the door and window. Start our pre-flight walk around. Door and window's open. We need our fuel valves open in order to do our um, fuel sumping test, so we'll do, do those. Uh, the control lock can come off because we're going to want to wiggle those uh, ailerons and make sure... That we uh, make sure that we have uh, free movement of those. Let's go ahead and do our walk around, and we'll just go ahead right sequentially. So first position here, uh, we're going to make sure that that flap does not move in the up position. Go ahead and knock it down into the first position. We'll go back and forth. There's a little bit of play, but not too much. No unusual squeaking or rubbing sa heard sounds heard in all three positions. So back up we go next. Aileron, roll lock is off. This should move freely. Again, listening to make sure that there are no unusual squeak, squeaking or rubbing sounds as we move that back and forth. Out here to the tip tanks. Uh, let's see. We... Oh, my math in that spreadsheet is wrong. We are going to do 25 gallons in each of the main tanks, but we do not need any fuel in the tip tank. So let's go to fuel and payload. Um... Uh, we'll just we'll just leave the three gallons in there that's in there. Um, but we do want to open that up, visually inspect the fuel level. Of course, we can't see it because it's pretty low. Um, but yeah, if you had more fuel in there, you would want to make sure visually that you could see that there. Uh, we'll continue our walk around for now. Uh, next is the um, sump. Go ahead and grab that by the bottom. Just Just a tiny little bit. Just need a little bit to see that it's... Blue and not water. Okay, yeah, we don't want to dump too much out onto the pavement. Really, you should put it back in the tank, but <laughs> mostly just making sure that it's not water coming out of there and it looked blue from the very beginning, so that's all we need to do there. Uh, moving on, we, we would check the uh, lights. We're going to actually do a uh, light check here on the second walk around, so skip that for now. Uh, we'll take our tie down off. Um, nothing else that we really need to check except for any visual inspection for any kind of damage or anything like that. Uh, this is our... Is this the fuel tank or is this the oil? I think this is the uh, main tank on the right-hand side. Yeah, okay. And we're going to we're gonna set those. I had said 25. We need a total of 50 gallons to start this flight. And we got three extra in each right and left wing tank and three extra in the tip tank. So I think we're good. We'll just leave it like that. That's good. We've now done a visual inspection. We can see blue level nearly full. Um, 
And uh, so we're good there. So back to the walk around. Next stop is the wheel trucks, which we're also looking for you know, visual condition of anything uh, amiss looking there, and everything looks fine. Uh, this is the main tank. This is why you have to have the fuel valves open uh, from inside the cockpit for this to work. We'll grab that. And again, just, just enough to see that it's blue coming out and not water. Don't need to waste any more than... Whoops. Don't need to... Oh, stop. Stop. Just leave it alone. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Get it out of the way. Come, come on. Get it out of the way so we can close that up. Okay, good. Uh, in the front, visual condition of the prop. Oh, by the way, I, the, the, the options I selected in this plane, you have uh, some... Um, some options. I'll, I'll show you those when we get inside. Um, I have this is this is has this has this all the speed options. Okay, so we've got the speedier prop. We've got all the fairings that reduce drag. Um, we do have the stabilator uh, stabilator tips, which in, increase your uh, your VNE speed. So this is the speed kit aircraft. I've made it as fast as possible. All right. So um, visual condition of the prop. Everything looks good. Visual condition of the engine. Uh, intakes, everything looks good. Uh, this is this is the okay. This is the oil dipstick. This is a and I I started this as a fairly new aircraft. I'm not brave enough to start it as used or uh, auction just yet. Maybe we'll try that once I gain a little bit more experience. So the oil's pretty new. I've only done a, I've only got a couple hours on it. Um, nine, you know, above nine is kind of get recommended, and you can see that it's uh, you know about ten or ten and a half there. So we're good. We can go ahead and uh, put that back in, and a nice clear color. So right, you want to make sure you have enough, and you want to make sure that it's not really dirty. Uh, though both of those conditions having been met, we'll move on. This is our um, left main tank. Again, we should this, this should be fairly full, and yes, we can visually inspect to see that the level is where it should be. And we'll get down to the bottom. Um, we'll take away the uh, shocks there, and again, visual condition of the gear, everything looks fine. Uh, out here, we will take away the tie down. We'll take away the uh, pitot cover. Look, at, I love the way that sways in the wind. If if it's a windy, gusty day, you'll see it sway even more. Very awesome. Out here, we'll do a light check on the second pass. And again, we sh we if, if we had 15 gallons in it, we should see some of it. We've got three gallons in it. We, it's too low for us to see, but just open that up just for the exercise. There we go. Down underneath. Uh, by the way, we're looking for not only um, the blue color, but looking to see if there's any contaminants. So it's it is blue as opposed to clear water, um, and that's good. And there's and, but there's no uh, there's no contamination. It looks like it's nice pure blue uh, liquid there. So whoops, yeah, done. Uh, next is the uh, aileron on the left-hand side, and again, make sure that that moves freely as it should, and it doesn't squeak or rub or uh, or catch anywhere. Good. And then the flap should be fairly sturdy; shouldn't move it uh, hardly at all. A little bit of play in the uh, each of the three positions, but uh, nothing unusual. Everything seems fine there, and we'll go ahead and track those. Uh, on the back, this is the static port. Just make sure there's no obstructions of the uh, static port. We'll come back to the rear. Uh, stable stabilizer, stable later. There we go. Just again, moves freely. The rudder should move, but fairly taut there uh, because it's connected to the nose wheel steering. That's why it doesn't move as freely. And then we'll remove the rear tie down. Uh, the static port again, making sure that it's unobstructed. Figure out what baggage we want to take. This is just a, just me, so we'll take the toolkit and the duffel bag, and we don't really have any suitcases other than that, so that's good. That's enough. Uh, and then I think that is it, guys. That's it for the walk around. Uh, real pre-flights now in uh, flights in 2020, Lava Cow? Well, yes, in this plane. A Discovery video says this looks cool. Peaches says this is what you would do in real life, indeed. Very, very close, at least. Big Beefcake is here. Another fifty bucks out the window. Yeah, shut up and take my money, right? Big beef, cake, beef big beef cake. We were, our our draws were just agape in that uh, uh, in that ballroom, that hotel ballroom, when they showed us the video of this thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, make sure there's no bugs in there, right, Peaches? Yeah, indeed. 
in the well in, in and in the uh, WB Sim JP Logistics that's in the pito tube. <laughs> Richard said, I let it idle for a while. The magneto's getting messed up and you had to clear the plugs. Yeah, I've had to retrain myself to include leaning the mix here on the ground. I've been bad about that in this plane and in the WB sim. You have to be careful about that. All right, so we did finish that first round um, walk around. I have not yet figured out my mouse binding. I mean, my, my switch binding for the master battery doesn't yet work. Uh, but we're going to do master battery... We can do all the lights. Let's do another quick walk around. Uh, we can see the strobes operating. We want to see um, are the nav lights. Uh oh, we have a bad bulb there. That does not look like it's light lighting. That is definitely lit. So the strobes working. We'll see the rotating beacon when we get to the back. Landing lights are working on both sides. Okay, yeah, my nav lights are not working for some reason. Interesting. Okay, well, we'll have to check that out, I guess. And then when we get to the tail position, we'll be able to see, yeah, the rotating beacon is up and running as well. So, yeah, uh, nav lights don't seem to be working. Let's... um. Let's go back into the cockpit and check that. That's not going to be a deal breaker since we're daytime. Uh, I generally do use them. Uh, maybe I need to just turn them up some here. And then let's let's try that. Ah, there we go. Okay. So uh, there's variable intensity. I'm going to have to just change that key binding to... Uh, to account for that maybe or I'll just have to do that by mouse okay and that red one's nice and red now too okay we're good um, so back let's yeah let's finish up the finish up the walk around uh, we can turn all that back off all right so there we go um, go ahead and set our passenger load. Who are we taking with us today, guys? Uh, let's just do one. Let's just do one passenger. This uh, dude here. This is um, this is Charlie. We got infer we got Charlie on board. Okay. Um, all right. What else? Passenger load set. Okay. Let's go ahead and set the uh, close the door. And you got to close it, and then you also have to latch it up top. And I keep losing my place. And then we'll check the circuit breakers. I'm going to get that yoke out of the way. Just kind of scan underneath. You'd see if any of these were popped. You'd see this, uh, this white. So just a quick scan across the bottom. I think that's all there is. Um, just scan across the bottom and look for any of those. Yeah, that one just popped. <laughs> maybe, or maybe I clicked on it by accident. Anyway. So there you go, your uh, circuit breaker scan underneath. All right, so I think we're good. Uh, let's go um, close up the tablet now that we've done that. Let's go mix and prop levers, full forward, mix. That's one and three. That pro throttle's in the middle. That's going to throw me off. Uh, we'll crack the throttle open just a little bit. Uh, battery switch on. Yeah, we need to mouse that for now. Uh, nav and beacon lights on. And I guess we'll go ahead and turn the nav lights up. About to add that to my list. Uh, nav and beacon lights on. Let's do the fuel pump on, which is there. Uh, we're going to watch fuel pressure. It's going to take about 10 seconds to come up to uh, 5. There it goes. Now we can unlock that primer. Pull it about maybe four times. One, two, three, and four. And then we'll relock that. And clear the prop area. Clear, 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 clear. And then we'll go ahead and get the mags right, left, both, and hit the starter. Good. Take it a few times to cycle and catch. There it goes. Hey, look at that. Comes right to life, though. 
That's the blessing of it being a fairly new engine. Uh, we do want to make sure the oil pressure comes up right away, which is there. And we can see that it has. We can go ahead and close those windows up. Uh, we want to make sure we're idling it somewhere between 800 and 1,000, maybe about 900. So there we go. <coughs> uh, <coughs> and we were just talking about this. We want to go ahead and um, lean the mix out here until the RPM starts to drop. Oh, there we go. Get it right back up to that 900. Yep, and if you do foul the plugs, I'm volume up the mix. Going on, how's the mix for you guys? It's not too bad. You know what we might do? Might let you guys, whoops, I don't need the control lock. Might let you guys hear the engines just a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to, where is it? Controls, yeah. How about warning? go. Whoops. that better? I like that. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Uh, so anyway, we got the uh, got the mix leaned out. Let's go ahead and we can we can do the fuel pump off at this point. Now that we've got the engines um, engine driven fuel pump is now providing fuel pressure and we can see that it still has fuel pressure so we're good there. Uh, windows closed, we did. Uh, the avionics switch can come on, which is there. Uh, no, no. Uh, that's, um, what is that? That's PWP. Avionics is there. Do the master battery switch there, even though it's not working yet. Um, avionics is on. Uh, let's do the common nav radios on, so that's uh, once there. There. We'll go ahead and put that in altitude mode and then this radio over here. So there's four radios we need to turn on. And then uh, eight. And uh, where's my swap button? There it is. <coughs> okay, and we don't need to uh, monitor both. We'll monitor them. Alright, so I think we're set to go. Uh, we want to check our, our, our amps. Uh, where's our amp meter? Okay, so we're, yeah, we're good on electricity. We're producing more than we're using. And uh, gyro suction is over here, and that's good to go as well. Uh, and then let's just hit the white button there on the... Um, engine monitor just to stop it from flashing that question at us. I don't really know everything that that engine monitor does, but uh, just ignore it for now. All right, um, we've set our flight plan. We uh, we did check the ATIS. Uh, it, well, we did have one earlier, but let's just do it. That was a while ago. Do a METAR K SNA and just see if anything's changed. Uh, they're reporting, eh, it's changed slightly, 180 at 11, so we're going to take off to the south, um, 2990 is the altimeter, so uh, yeah, nothing other, no other major issues there, 2990, we'll go ahead and get that set in the altimeter, and which is right there, uh, when, as soon as I set the, um, set the altimeter, the next thing I want to do is set the gyro, this gyro does drift, by the way, so you do have to continue to monitor that. We are parked right now at a 345, and I bet you it's nowhere near that. Yeah, so we pop that in, and uh, yep, change that up to a 345. And pop that out. Altimeter set field elevation here at John Wayne is uh, indeed 56 feet, so that's pretty close to what's being shown. Um, Helm radios needed, no clearance to obtain, squawks uh, in altitude mode set, nav and ADF tuners, heading bug. Um, so wait a minute, first of all, let's get this route on Sky Vector back in front of us. The very first thing we're going to do is navigate to the Seal Beach VOR, 115.7, uh, and just direct from where our present position is. So let's go ahead and set 
and the uh, nav one. Plop that in. Uh, doesn't look like we're receiving anything on that just yet. Uh, we're going to set the heading bug to the runway heading that we're going to be flying, which is uh, 196 for 20 right. 196, and then uh, Seal Beach is going to be approximately a 293 from us. Although it'll be, it'll end up being a little bit higher than that because we're gonna obviously we're gonna take off in that direction. Um, who knows exactly how long we're going to uh, fly down there? So exactly what direction it's gonna be from us, we don't know. But a 304 seems reasonable. Um, but whatever it happens to be, we'll center and uh, that will take us direct to it. But uh, anyway, so yeah, a 196, I think I said. Yeah, 196, and then about a 300 up to uh, Seal Beach. So let's spin the, uh, I think I got a button for that. Yep, that works, good. There's 195 and 196, and then about a 300 up to Seal Beach. And then the next thing we'll do is just we'll get our next... Uh, VOR frequency ready to go because after Seal Beach we take it out 16 miles there But then we're going to do this short leg into the Los Angeles VOR 113.6 So we will have that tuned in ready in the standby 113.6 here All right, and then the Navin ADF tuners heading bug OBS as needed flight control check That's uh, we, of course we, ch we checked the uh, free movement of the flight controls but let's go ahead and just check our full range of our deflection wow you can even see the idle prop wash does make the plane kind of dip up and down you see that pitch slightly changing but I guess that means our flight controls are working huh yeah we're good there um let's see we'll go ahead and set flaps so the, so the POH specifies you can do is no flaps of course this is a nice long runway up to a flaps 2 for departure and since flaps 1 is kind of an average value that's what I'll go with here uh, I guess for this length of runway you probably wouldn't use flaps but uh, I kind of just do the same flap setting for every takeoff unless I need something special um, so flaps are uh, flaps are set trim is uh, roughly neutral we can trim it down a little bit there get it back to neutral so there we go uh, taxi routing is just going to be what? Uh, I guess if we're here, we're going to go northbound Bravo, Bravo Lima to twenty right. Yeah, I know I missed a bunch of stuff in the chat, guys. I apologize, uh, but at this point, we want to go ahead and get rolling. So let's get the parking brake off. Uh, there's there's no taxi light per se. There's there's left and right side landing lights. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're, we're fine. I don't know that I need a taxi light, per se. Um, cylinder head temps are uh, nice and warm. Oil temps are nice and warm. I think we're ready to go, guys. I think I should check, actually add that to my list, and make sure that that's the case before we taxi. So let me just add that step in. Glad that I thought to do it, but... Check oil and cylinder. Anybody remember how to spell cylinder? Save that. Okay, let's go, guys. Oh man, I love the sound of that thing surging forward. Alright, so brake check. Brakes are good. <laughs> All right, and we'll do a radio call here. John Wayne Traffic, Piper, uh, Comanche 514 Delta Victors, uh, taxiing out for an IFR westbound departure, a 20 right via Bravo, John Wayne. Traffic Comanche, one more four, right. Papa. Following the uh, the other Comanche, taxiing to two zero right via Bravo. Okay, very good. So we know our radio is working. 
And John Wayne uh, Piper 11816 will be number three. Hey, I hear uh, Dude, that was a good fixins, and now it's a Melvin also. Very cool, very cool. We will do a quick run up when we get up to the end. I can't remember if there's a pull off pad for that or not. We may just end up holding up the line. I don't want to idle it that low. May just end up holding up the line a little bit while we do that. But presumably the guys behind me are all flying the same kind of plane. They're going to want to do that too. So The mag check is always unforgiving for me, says JCT. Yeah, so I had to... Uh, so you'll notice I am running um, lean a peak here. Or lean of... Yeah, not uh, leaned out, not full rich. And I think that's a, a, a habit I have not been in, but I'm going to need to be in. And I'm trying to add that back into my WB sim. Uh, 152 checklist as well because I've been burned a few times on that where done the run up and the RPM drop is like three four hundred RPMs and I'm like whoa guess what I forgot to do <laughs> all right here we are at the hold short anybody who wants to jump the line you can do that in one taxi way uh, sooner all right run up coming so mix coming in 2,000 on the RPMs. And let's do, uh, first let's do the mag check. Left mag only. We only lost about 100 RPMs there. Back. Right mag only. Uh, lost about 150, 60 RPMs. So if it's more than 50 difference, you should go back. But, eh, close enough. What could go wrong? Um, let's go ahead and test our prop lever three times. One, two, and three. All right, let's uh, do carb heat. Yep, carb heat causes a little bit of RPM loss as well. And then let's just text, test the uh, mix lever. Make sure that we do get a noticeable difference. Ah, I was a little abrupt on that, but we do get a little of a difference there. We'll pull it back to full idle, make sure that it continues to run, and then we'll set it back up to uh, 900 or 1,000 or so. Okay, run-up's complete. John Wayne Traffic, Mooney 514, Delta Victor, correction, uh, Comanche 514, Delta Victor's uh, departing runway 20 right. could be a right-hand turnoff for uh, IFR westbound departure, John Wayne. We're gonna have to get out of the habit of saying Mooney, huh? Strobe's on, landing light's on, heat to heat on. Oh, you know what else? Fuel pump on for departure. All right, temps and pressure's all looking good. Takeoff power coming at you. Sounds so good. <laughs> Sounds so good. Let's stick her right on the red line, shall we? Eighty knots. Let's fly her away. Positive climb. Gears coming up. Can traffic? Command one one four. Couple lining up two zero right. And then I think normal climb out speed one hundred ten. Keep the power into a thousand. Pitch for 110. Once we get to 400, though, we can pull the flaps in. Ooh, nose pops right up when you do that, too. Huh? Wow. John Wayne traffic, command you 5 and 4 out to make clear of 2 0 right uh, on the right turnout for westbound IFR departure. On my okay, and that radial's starting to come in. And we dialed in for the uh, Seal Beach VOR. I'll go ahead and spin the heading bug around and match that. Might not end up exactly on that radial, but because we're not on a specific airway at this time, we can kind of just adjust that as necessary. Because there's a thousand, so now let's do. Traffic, 
Papa, departing runway 20 right, uh, I have our departure to the west of the runway. The 2400, and then as much power as the uh, temps will allow. Runway traffic, Command G 11816 lining up for departure. I'll tell you what, let's uh, let's just throw a little bit of the red lighting in there. It's kind of starting to be dusk already. And we're going to 6,000. Alright, can we lean for a little bit of power here? Whoa! Too much lean, I think. I think it was a glitch in my my uh, mixture knob. It came all the way out when I did that. I don't think that was the aircraft's fault. I am going to change my squawk because I am IFR, so I'm going to change my squawk to 2200 rather than 1200, just in case a controller. Oh, we do have uh, we do have a controller on. 28. Oh five. Where's it going? Let me get my mouse. Wait, oh five. John, we traffic one four. You pop up. Clear the field. Part of the bus. Do I need a pre D or uh, do I just push with taxi to to? Stop the fifty two eighty eight. So count perhaps you can uh, call me for taxi. I'll send you a PDC for your claim. Copy. So kind of departure, Comanche 5 and 4 Delta Victor. Comanche 514 Delta Victor, so come. Uh, yes sir, just saw that you popped on. We uh, departed John Wayne. We're on the tech route to uh, Santa Barbara. Uh, 3,400 climbing approaching Seal Beach VR. I don't know where my DME box is. Sir, 514 Delta Victor, squad 4746. Four seven four six five one four Delta Victor. American A forty six here at the airport in sight. Uh, American A forty six at the airport in sight. Right on two four left. American A forty six clear visual approach only two four left. Only two four left. Uh, where's the ME readout, guys? Anybody know? Clear the lines. American A forty six one two four left. Air 514 Delta Victor, radar contact uh, four miles west of the uh, John Wayne Airport. 514 Delta Victor, roger, thank you. Left corner. Left corner of what? What is it left of? I love it. Angeles departure says the 4303 Lima is holding short to It's on left. the radio. Flip the no. departure to the south Flip. at 5,500. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. 303 Lima, Soak out departure. Squad there we go. I see it. Thank you. Hold short for way 24 left. 4673 holding short, short to 4 left. And we only have that on COM 1. Or NAV 1, rather. All right, cool deal, guys. Thank you very much for that. Cylinder head temps are good. Oil temps are good. Keep it at 2,400. And then what's the next navigation step? Is uh, west of Seal Beach on a 272, right? Yeah, west of Seal Beach on a 272. Air 114 Whiskey Papa, squad 4605. So I'm going to set the heading bug to that in preparation for that turn. And we're also coming up on our. 403 Lima, Roy 24 left, line up and wait. 24 left, line up and wait, 203 Lima. Air 4303 Lima, cleared out of Los Angeles Bravo airspace, maintaining the VFR. 
Coming up on our left turn here. Cleared out of Los Angeles Bravo airspace, and can be a far set to 4303 Lima. Just the needle, just a little bit. Alright, there's our 6,000. Level her off. Oh, and the other thing we can do is once, when we lowered the power from climb to uh, take off to climb, that fuel pump come off. Oh yeah, my cylinder head temp number five, Papa Charlie. Look at that. So the cylinder head temp gauge down here is reading okay. This one is saying my number five is running hot. So I wonder if we just back that throttle down a little bit. approach squad five five three two seven. Fifty three twenty seven Comanche eight sixteen. And we want to go ahead and pull the RPMs down anyway. All right, so I'm going to pull the RPMs down, and I'm going to try and get back down to my 6,000, and I'm going to try and start that left turn. Oh, wait a minute. That's why. So my prop lever is over there. I'm pulling the wrong lever down. There's 22. The full rich for the moment. Two four left clear for takeoff. Set the Alright, so as much power as she'll take. Keep it trimmed down, get back to that six thousand. Then again, let's try to lean. Five one four Delta Victor, clear direct Los Angeles VOR. Direct Los Angeles VOR, five one four Delta Victor. Six. Then until it centers. And then we'll fly that. Right, we still still need to get back down to about six thousand, so I'm working on that. Cruise power set to 2200 RPMs. Throttle is open as it'll go without hurting the engine. Temps all look okay. We want to lean it out to November about. Power 16 gallons an hour is kind of like max power. So there we go. 514 Delta Victor, LAL tender to 9990. 9990, 514 Delta Victor. 4303 Lima, radar contact, altitude indicates 1600. Yeah, I think I had a little bit of inadvertent radar rudder control in there. Nine. All right, so we're slowly letting it come down, back down to 6000. We're okay. Did I miss anything at cruise here? Don't need to do any uh, fuel one management. Because we're flying just on the main tanks the entire way today. And we'll go back to our DME reading here. 13 miles into Los Angeles. All right, there's 6,000. I have not messed with the autopilot yet. I don't know how it works. I'm not in a hurry to find out. That's for another day. Got some more new friends. The JCT stopped in. I think I said hi to you.
And Xander YHWH says, I did this flight when it came out. It was wonderful. My day was a lot more bumpy. Yeah, we've been lucky with the weather so far. So we're, di we're direct to Los Angeles VOR, but we're not on a specific airway. We're just direct from wherever we wound up. So I can kind of just adjust that needle as need be, but it does seem like we got a little bit of a right to left. Can't fly into 6,000 here. Of course, we can see the airport right below us. We can kind of just aim for that, honestly. <laughs> And then what's our next navigation step after Los Angeles? We got shortcut it up to there, so it's a 276 once we get west of Los Angeles. So we'll be ready for that. Two seven uh Four three zero three, Lehman leaving Bravo Airspace, maintain VFR out of below four thousand five hundred for now. Yeah, below four thousand five hundred. Lots fourteen sixty nine, wind two three zero one zero, runway two five left, clear to land. Clear to land two five left, Alaska fourteen sixty nine. This plane, I'm I'm gonna get used to doing a more thorough scan, and we're dropping a couple hundred feet of altitude here. More thorough scan of the instrument gauges than I'm used to. I'm used to doing. Uh, so uh, Peaches did say, "Yeah, there's a cylinder head tip on the EFB." Yes, that is true. However, I don't know that you would have that realistically. That is a almost like a sim cheat to make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Which I like having that um, if I if I need it. Um, but if I wouldn't have a, a, an ability to have a magic wand to see into the engine in the real world, I don't know that I would pretend to have it here in the cockpit. So um, this is more information than I th I'm used to having. You know, I did miss earlier. You guys pointed out that the number five was showing hot. Uh, I was looking at this gauge down here, which said everything was fine. Um, but yeah, I would want to try and limit myself to what I would really have in the uh, cockpit. And what I think Peaches was referring to was there is an engine, uh, where, where is it? It's in maintenance, and uh, engine, yeah, so you have kind of that, but you, I don't, you wouldn't ever have that on an actual tablet. That's a crystal ball kind of thing. Okay, so passing over Los Angeles now, Let's go ahead and get on that 272. Oh, now I'm a little bit left, of course, so let's correct to the right. Look up first with the 288 30 taxi. Yeah, you guys are talking about some of the GPS add-ons. Um, obviously, you're not going to see that in, in my version of this plane. Or one one eight one six clear direct Los Angeles VOR. Uh, direct Los Angeles VOR. Seven six west of Los Angeles, and I'm off course a little bit, but we're just gonna gently correct around to the right, get back on that. Uh oh, maybe we weren't. Oh, I, I'm over top of it now. Okay, well now I'm left. Of, now I'm right of course. <laughs> oh, and you know what I haven't done? You know, we were saying earlier, one thing that you have to do in this aircraft is recheck that gyro. That gyro is going to spin out of uh, out of alignment every now and then. That needle's coming in way quicker than it should for the small correction I'm putting in, but I have a feeling it's because my directional gyro has drifted off a little bit. Let's, uh, once I get stable on the airway, let's check that out here in just a moment. Four, three, zero, three, blue, and maintain VFR at 5,500. Nice and stable on a heading. And that says I'm on about a 27, about a 280. This says I'm on about a 275, so yeah, let's, let's correct it down by about 5 degrees. There we are. 
Gotta add that to my my cruise checklist. And then what's the next VOR up the line I should be going to? I'm going 18 miles out to Slade and then 33 miles into Ventura 1082. So I'm getting 1082 pre-tuned and ready to go. One tactic says friend to all to so do the assessment through all the dashboard instruments then look up the actual answer in the EFB that's a great way to learn troubleshooting how the plane works yeah I think that's kind of what I want to do friend to all I want to train myself to find issues as you would in the real plane but then once I you know once I identify those issues either to verify that I've got the right answer uh, or if I get stumped on something use the EFB to uh, to uh, train myself. But yeah, I think you have it exactly right as far as the way I want to do things, which is I want to do it, I, I want to identify issues as as realistically as possible rather than looking in, into that magic crystal ball. Lost to 1469, Crossroy 25 right at Julian, and then taxi Bravo to the ramp. Alright, so we're out, and what did I say, we're 8.4, what did I say, how far west on, uh, on that are we going? 18 west of uh, Los Angeles on the 276. Temps and pressure is all still looking good. We're 2,200, 16 uh, gallons. Cruising along 160 to 170 knots. Everything's looking good. Albemers. <laughs> I have no idea if I'm even close. But Joao, thank you very much. Appreciate that follow. Find that A2A Comanche. For the very first time on stream. Third time I've flown it overall. First time on stream. Really just a short uh, test flight. We're going to fly it in the Chicago event tomorrow. Midway, Matt, midway Monday tomorrow. Lean it just a touch here. Let's start thinking about our arrival into Santa Barbara, guys. 14 miles west. Okay, we gotta. Okay, SBA. 250 at 9, statute miles clear, 2990. Okay. What's that mean for us as far as our arrival? Runway 25, more than likely. Uh, transient Five GA parking is up Contact LA Center, 135.55. On the north side. 3555, 514 Delta Victor, thanks. I disabled the 8.33. <laughs> Since we don't use it here in the States. Spirit 476. Westhead 17, KD8, Vegas, altimeter 29 or 86, at Burbank, clear the ILS, runway 26, left approach. 
Uh, getting ready to make that transition. Uh, 18 out. 286 and, then it's and uh, at Bourbon, clear. ILS 26 left approach. 1082 and a 093, which will be a 273. Los Angeles Center, good evening. It's uh, 082, uh, 22 miles northwest of Cuba City, flight level 380. 273. The gentleman from Tuba City, say the consent again. Sorry, I didn't get it. Oh, you're good. It's uh, Hillwood, 84. Ed Dave's here. How's the test flight going so far? So far, flying like a dream, man. 72, 67, 84, 62. Los Angeles Center, Comanche 5 and Fort Alta Victor 6000. Comanche, Fort Alta Victor, Los Angeles Center, KZ. Center Walker, 35, 25, heavy, Vegas. And once we get west of, yeah, we're still a ways out, so. West of there, 26 miles, and then another 18 miles. So once we get probably to this point, Quang is where we worry about uh, approach choice. But a visual to two five seems like it's reasonable. Um, let's just see if, do they have an ILS? They got a VOR approach to runway two five. That's you, Brian. Pull that up just in case. Pull that up just in case. Hopefully, we'll be able to take a visual there, though. And center just confirmed for us. Hellwind 8462. It's uh, 7267. Is that correct? So far? Drifting just slightly. Yeah, right. Right, of course, we'll do a general correction to the left. Inbound now to that Ventura. After Ventura, the next VOR up the line is, uh, oh, we don't have one. We don't have a next VOR up the line. Uh, Spirit 476, continue to send arrival. Uh, uh, if we needed Vegas, the. Uh, 26 left, uh, terminal 2986. So if we, do, if we do a, a VOR approach into uh, uh, 25, uh, it'll be 113.8 for Gaviota. So we'll get that tuned in and ready to go. Overshot the correction there. Quick scan of the gauges, temps, pressures, readouts all looking good. Um, fuel levels all looking still good. A couple little bumps over the terrain here as far as uh, turbulence goes. Nothing, nothing too terrible. Actually, one was keep up, four was keep up, I like center, good evening. All right, there we go, getting back on our VOR. Here, Canada 545, Vegas, altimeter 2986. United 2232, pilot's discretion, mean, this NBL, lucky one arrival. Just touch. Kind of Because falling off our altitude one, by just a few feet here. 50 feet. LA Center, hello, United 21 Heavy, Las Vegas Uniform, clearance please. United 21 Heavy, Roger, uh, thanks for your uniform, stand by uh, PTC. All right. And Center, Southwest 16 through one is ready to taxi with information uniform. Okay, so 3.9 until we get to Ventura, and then what's the next step? 282. All right, we're not on this airway on the 289. We're on this reference line on the 282. Lovely sunset. Yeah, we're flying, flying off into the sunset. That's right. The 282. 
sorry, some of them stepped on there. I did get it. Uh, Delta 2048, is that with you? Uh, I don't have a flight plan. Please follow up. Walker 3525, wind uh, 2108. And then uh, another, another opportunity to get a steady heading going. Looks like we're on a 280 exactly. Pop this in and make that agree. And be ready to turn to a 282. And we're basically passing over the VOR right now, so we'll do it. Very general right turn. Runway, excuse me, 1182. Runway 26 right taxi via Bravo 4 Bravo. Uh, you're following the company 737. Bravo 4 Bravo will follow the company 1182. Alright, we're going to wait for that needle to come back in here. Shadow Comanche 11816, 6000. Comanche uh, 816, LA Center, good evening, sir. How many Comanches are we going to hear tonight? I mean, there's us, us three that are all on the line to get up there. How many more are there? Have we heard any others? Of course, we heard a couple people say Piper. You don't know for sure what, what type of Piper they are. They could be Comanches also. I'm sure it's been a flood of them, yeah, indeed. indeed I, I expect the same. On the ceiling is a red button to light the dashboard. Yep, I know. We got it on already. <laughs> Comanche Mafia, Joey Freshwater. How are you, man? <laughs> oh, the dial for the nav lights is also the instrument light brightness. Interesting. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Straight up and down seems to be working for me for right now. We'll see. Might need to brighten it up once the uh, once the sun dips over the horizon. Center Center, uh, let's start briefing this approach here just in case. Uh, so from that quang, yeah, it looks like we're going to be on the uh, Gaviota 0 Niner Niner on a 27 Niner inbound. And it looks like we fly that to the Zax intersection, 20.7 distant, and we need to be 2100 there. We're going to intercept the 3000. And it's going to be a uh, left turn 279 to a runway 25, so about a 45 degree left turn once we, uh, once we get within sight of the, uh, of the field. If we do have to go missed, left turn 4000 on the Gaviota. Okay, are you, are you, are you, are you, 127, okay. Yeah, we're having throttle issues with our so controller. We're going to set okay, uh, so 113 um, 8 also with the NAV 2. Right in Quebec, and then uh, just let me know when you're ready. And then uh, have Charlotte that set to. Thank you so much for your help. Uh, America, sorry, Southwest 601. Yeah, no problem. Air Canada 545, uh, 127, in right, case we need it. Just okay, approach altitude, 4,000, right, 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 Roger, that's the thing. Alpha 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7
Uh, Alright, and what's the uh, what's the distance out to Wang here? Twenty-six out to Wang. Six right at CV at Charlie 2 Bravo. Uh, Charlie 2 Bravo followed the uh, CRJ right to left for United 21 Heavy. Watch at 1788. And that's 18 miles in, land, so we gotta go 18 to. to 18 to 0, to zero. zero. that's gonna be 6,000. So, really, honestly, if we start the descent at Quang, we should be fine. Uh, Melvin's uh, asking about parking location. Uh, Transient GA parking on the northeast side is where I was right, planning on going. Strictly 476, that's pretty no cleared. ILS 126 left approach. Pick a five string is here. So as I was watching, tracking the arrivals into Oshkosh today, listening to the Fisk controllers, I'm sure that was a hoot, man. I felt bad for the Bonanza guys that spent more money for a bow because all the com Comanches were called out as a uh, Bonanza, right? <laughs> I got a low wing with tip tanks. Low wing with tip tanks. Give me a wing rock. <laughs> By the way, of a one very subtle little thing that I love about this airplane, it is a subtle thing, but as a guy who flies radio-based navigation almost exclusively, I love it. They've gone to great lengths to make this needle respond smoothly. Watch as I take it out of uh, calibration. Oops, that's the honey bug. Watch as I take the needle out of, cal out of calibration and how smoothly it moves over and back in. I love that. That's not like a like a pixel at a time kind of thing. Oh, look, our uh, our Gaviota um, NAV2 radio just started receiving. A little bit of a jittery response from the left aileron. That's a that's a hardware issue. Eight twenty. Just verify you can descend via the RNAV arrival to comply with the restrictions there. Yeah. Looking much better now. Well, that's not an issue with the A two A. That's an issue with my honeycomb. Right off seven. Hold short two six. Right off seven. Uh, Charlie Charlie and what did I say it was to quag mileage wise? And Southwest and Jarrah, ready to get going again. 26. And we're at 19.9. Uh, turn right there on Romeo. And you're going to be number three in the sequence there, uh, following the United 787 Heavy. Pick a five string, since that is a nice touch. Uh, Southwest 601. I was 33, 39. <laughs> are you able still to go full length? There? Bonanza, why aren't you turning? Okay, you guys, go ahead to full length, please. That's an that. actual yeah. transcript from that venture. <laughs> uh, At least in your case, you guys knew it was a bonanza. Roger. We can take Alpha to uh, Alpha 601. Yeah, I just I need I need the full length. I can't I can't. Oh, Bitfixins got a uh, got an AFE bomb. Yeah. Picture, the hair purple is becoming your twelve o'clock now, less than one two miles. When able report Santa Barbara inside. Uh, I don't have it in sight yet, but looking for lower five one four Delta Victor. Four Delta Victor, Roger. They said it maintained four thousand. Four thousand five one four Delta Victor. Number four whiskey pop. I decided maintain five thousand. The uh, Santa Barbara altimeter is two niner. Manager, expect the visual running 25 approach. All right, the uh, center maintain 5,000, and we'll expect the uh, visual for 25. All right, throttle coming out. Props anyway, are coming in. Climbing, uh, 3 .3 on the Stop the 16 0 stepped on you there. So just take like full length 26 right. So, what I'm going to do at this point full line six right. is just uh, tune that Gaviota. Stop the 1182 with a contact climb and maintain flexible 280. 113, 8, and uh, 279. 
Uh, so it's about 15 miles. The airport is at uh, is at 14.7 DMA. And we're at 29, so it's about it's like right in here. 3,800 5 and 4 Delta Victor. We're still looking for the field. No worries. And who's looking for taxi at Vegas? Uh, Spirit Wings 1466. Spirit Wings 1466, uh, Roger Rooney 26, right? That's the uh, uh, Golf Bravo. Full length, the Vegas altimeters 2988, uh, sorry, your description says 2988, 2988. 2685, Golf Bravo, Spirit Wings 1466. Air Canada 545, stay cross on the left side, sir. Air Canada, just, yeah, you're clear to cross there. Just hold short of Delta, please. Okay, we'll hold short of Delta, thank you. Thank you, Skywest 3339, runway 126, right, clear for takeoff. All right, 3800 is as slow as we can go. He's added 21 heavy, runway 26, right, full length, line up and wait. Line up and wait, 26, right, headed 21 heavy. Let's level her off there. I'm not going to add the power back in. I want the speed to bleed off. Sorry, smoke 2700. Descend via the Jackie 2 arrival. The altimeter of carrier 29 or 8 Right, the Jackie 2, 29 or 8 smoke 2700. And just looking at the shape of the terrain, it actually looks like it should be like right out here. We're like right in this vicinity. Number four, Delta Victor, descending we came 3,000. 3,000, five and four Delta Victor. Number four, Whiskey Papa, descending we came 4,000. Number 4,000, 445. Number 816, Santa Barbara, altimeters, two nine or nine or shirts, but the visual only two five approach. Uh, Set to maintain 5,000. Set to individual 25 and down to 5,000. Command G 16. Southwest 681, ready taxi. Southwest 681. Roger. Follow the uh, Spirit Wings 8220, runway 26 right taxi. Nice. The, uh, Props. Bravo. Props full forward, mix full forward. We're starting to ease the power back down. Follow the Spirit A220 via Bravo 26 right. Want to bring the props down just a little bit. Get it off that red line. Spirit Wings 476, runway 26 left. Clear to land. Clear to land, Spirit Wings 476. Scott with 3339, should be about zero, seven zero, miles zero. ahead. Number four, Delta Victor. The airport is now at your 12, 12, 12 o'clock, uh, less than uh, eight miles. Report to Santa Barbara flight. Five and four, Delta Victor. We got it in sight. Thank you, sir. Five, Delta Victor. Clear visual for 25, runway 25, clear to land. Wind uh, 240 at Niner. Uh, cleared visual approach and to land. Runway 25, five and four, Delta Victor. LA Center, Southwest 1441 on the ground at Las Vegas, requesting our fighter John Wayne. Roger, PDC 4th coming. Alright. Walker 3525, when you're ready, sir. Descend via the uh, 
Angel 4, arrival, the Ontario altimeter, 290, zero. It's going to start yelling at us yeah, we'll just the about the, uh, I've got most of the power out. It's going to start yelling at us if I bring the power down too low. I'll bring it down to just as low as it'll get it before it yells. And we'll start getting flaps and uh, gear. Uh, we are cleared to land. That's my cue to put the fuel pump back on. Alright, I lied. I didn't see the field. I got a 545 Roger, thanks for your patience. Uh, cross, uh, sorry, cross run, a taxi with Delta, taxi to grab the whiskey charge. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Sorry about that, a little bit garbled, say again. No problem. Uh, straight ahead there on whiskey, you can cross taxi with Delta, whiskey to the ramp on Charlie. Alright, let's level out. Whiskey to the ramp on Charlie for 545, thank you. We're going to need to get. 476, cross running 26 right at Alpha 7. 125 before we can uh, foot flaps in gear. The, uh, Bravo, join Charlie. I'm going to shade it to the right, almost S-turn it a little bit. Cross uh, 26 right, uh, Bravo, John, Charlie, Three wings 476. Inspector wings 476, give way to the Air Canada E320, you're going to be following him. Alright, there's 125, flaps 1, gear. Center 7782 with a request. Microphone Whiskey Papa, the, uh, there's traffic at your 12 o'clock, uh, indicating 1400 Piper to uh, maneuvering base to final for Ronnie 25. Report him inside. We got traffic inside for Whiskey Papa. For Whiskey Papa, right. follow him, you're cleared to report 25. You guys want to put some predictions in real quick? Sorry, it's a little bit of a rushed final here. Put some predictions in the chat. Uh, positive or negative, we know you mean a descent rate either way. Just a number into the chat. No bot command necessary. Alright, flaps three. Set and checks. Gear is down, he and presumably green. green. I don't know where to look for the uh, gear indicator. And we're going to try and get down to about 90 from the Roger, stop by. Send November 816 to send and making 4,000. 4,000, November 816. There's about 90, okay. And who's looking for taxi Vegas? Delta 2048, check your squawk please. Look at the BDC, you're squawking the wrong code. I can't let you move. And uh, LA sent a Delta 481 spot to Vegas, uh, quest taxi. Delta 41, Roger, thanks very much. Thanks for uh, the aid. is straight ahead there on Charlie 3, left Bravo. Ooh, yeah. Drop that power a little too high. Two, six left at Charlie 3 and Bravo. Well, 481, two. Almost. 2 6 right, Charlie 3, Bravo. 2 6 right, Charlie 3, Bravo. Drop that power a little bit too high. It wasn't terrible. Uh, I mean, it was a nice firm plan. Charlie traffic on Charlie runway 2 6 right via Charlie Bravo. Follow the taxi traffic on Charlie and then Charlie Brown. Okay. Spirit 470 is going to Air Canada 320. He's coming left to right. Yes, sir. I'm holding up for the uh, Air Canada uh, Spirit 476. November 4, Delta Victor. Welcome to Santa Barbara, sir. Are you parking uh, there on, uh, on the ramp there at Charlie? Uh, yeah, transient GA all the way on the northeast end. Okay, Roger. You can cross right 15 right, 15 left on Charlie and taxi to the transient. All right, cross uh, one fives at Charlie and to uh, transient parking. Five and four, Doctor Victor. Thanks. All right, Thank let's you, get sir. November four, whiskey bumper running two five. Clear Laps in, land. strobes one off, one landing one lights off. Third land. Pizza uh, and fuel pump off. off. And center hill one eighty. It was a decent approach, and then uh, 
kind of got floaty. Speed control was a little wonky. I was, I got it down to about 90, which is what they want as a landing speed. But then it kind of felt like it got floaty to me, and I like, chopped the power. I guess I need to chop the power much more gradually than what I did. Uh, we'll just we'll, we'll, we'll try to improve on it for tomorrow. That's all I can say. Thank you. Southwest 1441, Roger, give way to that Spirit Wings A220 there in Charlie. From the 265, taxi to Bravo 5 Bravo. Information uniform. Okay, we'll give way to the Spirit and uh, 265 via Bravo 5 Bra uh, Bravo, Southwest 1441. Roger. Information whiskey, correct the vacancy altimeter 2988. 2988 whiskey, thank you. And we'll set it back to about 8 to 900 RPMs. And kind of head out to the transient parking on the northwest side of the airport. Out here to the northeast side of the airport. <coughs> yeah, Kenny, that's the plan, man. That's the plan. You see, we got somebody coming in here. This uh, team of trucks coming to me is uh, obviously a uh, gear maintenance specialist team. Guy let me pass, sorry. Comanche 4 Whiskey Papa, welcome to Santa Barbara. Uh, cross runway 15 right, 15 left uh, on Charlie, and then taxi to transit. Thanks for flying. Alright, uh, cross 15 right and 15 left on Charlie, and taxi to the transient parking moment. Alaska 1453, Oakland's offline, frequency to change approved. Alright. Well, we got it here. It didn't break. We'll do kind of we'll do kind of a uh, maintenance inspection, like a thorough maintenance inspection. We'll show you that feature. Uh, sorry. Up to sixteen zero one radio contact failed with you. There we go. Sorry, I think I got stuck on there. Up to sixteen zero one. Uh, right, parking brake. Radio contact failed with you. Four thousand via Sid. Get the. Uh, RPM's back down to about 900. Go ahead and get the mix leaned back out until it just starts to dip. Southwest 2515, do not exceed 220 knots in the climb out for spacing. Runway 26 right, clear for takeoff. Alright, so there we are, leaned out. Uh, so flaps were stowed, strobe lights, landing lights, pitot heat, fuel pump, throttle set, parking brake. Uh, fuel and ETA, let me go ahead and do a check of my uh, fuel and ETA prediction. I don't really know how close we were with the departure time, actually. So we had planned... Planned to end with 28.6. Uh, but accounting for the four gallons of non-usable fuel, I had planned to land, end with 32.6. That should be 16.3 in the centers and zero in the, in the tips, but we know we started with three extra gallons in uh, the mains and three extra gallons in the tips. So we actually should have 19.3 and 3.0. And what was the time? 11.24, and where are we? Oh, we're early. Okay, so maybe we made better time. I don't know if we had a tailwind or if uh, maybe we were just cruising along faster than what I expected us to. Uh, but let's check for 19.3 and 3.0 in the tanks. And uh, down here and check on that. Uh, are you able to give me a little bit faster than that? There's a guy behind you, a, a point ten faster. So are you able to give me point? Oh, we got twenty-two. Okay, so we're a little, a little faster and a little more fuel efficient okay, uh, than I expected to be. So it might take a few flights before I tweak those numbers in and uh, get those where you know where I feel comfortable with them as accurately for my style of flying so we'll, we might ta may take some fine tuning but uh, anyway not too bad and then uh, let's let's look at your predictions guys yeah there was something way off about the G's that were recorded here Kenny 
Los Angeles Center, American 634, flight level 280. Well, that definitely beat flight. you in the G's. American 634, that might be Center, Melvin touching down now. 7256, American 634. Looks nice and smooth, looks smoother than mine. For takeoff, the wind, uh, three zero, correction, the wind, uh, but yeah, I have no idea how that... Three two now. No idea how that works. But 162 was the number, and of course we have to bounce. Kind of a hard hit there. But anyway, so we'll have to, I'll have to just chop the throttle much more gradually than what I did this time. Uh, the plane definitely wanted to slam itself into the pavement when I did that, so. 162. One, it's Kenny, you lost? Okay, we'll hold short of Alpha 2 and we'll give way to the Delta Southwest closing 41. Kenny went 173, he was 11 off and he lost. Akroner went 160. Yeah, Akroner has it. Akroner has it with the 162 away. Correction, American 634, descend via Scooby 2, Arnav arrival, Ontario altimeter 29090. <laughs> yep, Akroner gets it. Very cool. All right, let's um, let's go ahead and finish up the shutdown procedure, and then we'll kind of go over a, a magic maintenance check just to see if there's anything in the plane that I might be maltreating or mistreating that we wouldn't yet know about. Um, you know, until we uh, until we had the plane a little bit long term, but let's let's maybe use that magic crystal ball to stave uh, off any long term maintenance issues I may be causing if I miss uh, mistreating the aircraft. Um, so parking brake set, uh, fuel and ETAs checked, um, comm nav radios can come off, but we'll do that. Which one? Which two? Yeah. Transponder can come off, and the ADF radio can come off. You can see where that switch is. I saw the, there we are. Okay, good. Yeah, so those four radios are off. Avionics switch can come off, which is that there. Um, we'll do a live mag check. This is one thing that you want to kind of just do. Um, just blip the mags down real quick. And make sure that that does indeed kill power. So it does, so that's good. You never want to sit on the ramp with live mags by accident. And magnetos are weird. There's a lead wire that could come detached that would prevent it from killing power to the mag. So it's a little bit backwards. Um, you know, if that wire falls off, you wouldn't know it unless you went to kill power to the mags and they didn't kill. So always do that little live mag check. Make sure that that uh, lead wire that, uh, that cuts the power is indeed... Um, connected. Okay, now we can go ahead and pull it to full idle. And we'll go ahead and pull the mix out to cut off as well. And uh, um, prop lever can come down too once it stops. And we'll go ahead and take the mags down the rest of the way. Uh, nav and beacon lights can come off. Uh, the panel lights can come off. And the battery switch can come off. Of course, we got the MSFS flashlight. Uh, let's go ahead and get the fuel selectors off. And then I think we can go ahead and pop the door. The latch is up here past Charlie's head. Charlie, move your head, dude. Move your head. Move your head. All right, there we go. Thank you. All right, Charlie, get your ass out. Good, okay. <laughs> Obviously, you can't take the pilot out. Um... But we'll just go ahead and say that we are gone. We are outside. We are going to do a post-flight walk around. We do have to do a post-flight walk around. So obviously we've closed the door because we're now outside the plane. But we do have to do one more thing. We got to come around the plane again, and we got to put all back, put back all of the uh, static elements. So uh, we did un unpass and set the passenger load. Okay. So we got, uh, we got uh, four, five, position six. Put the tie down back up. Position 8, we'll do the right shocks. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 shocks. 14, we got the tie down and the pitot cover. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, we'll tie down. 22, 23, we'll 
Get the uh, baggage unloaded, tool kit and duffel bag, go ahead and close the door back up. And that should be fine, we'll get back in. Oh, you know what, I wouldn't have closed the door at this point, because at this point we're gonna come back in and put the control lock back up. Door then would be closed and latched and tablet stowed, okay. And at, at this point we're now outside of the plane. Right? There we go, okay, success test. Um, now let's, uh, I'll tell you what, before we wrap up though, let's go back in and we'll pull this tablet open and let's just do a full inspection uh, to see whether I have uh, broken anything in the aircraft. Obviously everything's fine with the engine now. But let's go to the airframe and do an inspection. Everything is green, meaning that there's nothing in the aircraft that is in a state of uh, um, needing maintenance or repair. Let's go to the engine and let's do an inspection. And everything is indeed good. Okay, so so far I would say I'm treating the engine just fine. So that's good news. All right, friends. Well, that is going to wrap us up then. Uh, just a one one quick hopper and a, oh, Akronerd, I got to get you your uh, get you your landing rate raffle ticket here. But uh, yeah, Akronerd, we'll get that in for you. That is going to wrap it up. As Kenny mentioned before, we are planning on taking this into uh, Midway Monday tomorrow. And so I did want to get one flight on the network. Uh, grateful that we, we uh, did have uh, SoCal Approach and Los Angeles Center on for us to give us a little bit of uh, practice managing the aircraft while managing communications. Um, so uh, very cool that we got that opportunity to uh, just kind of test ourselves on that uh, before tomorrow's event up at... Uh, Chicago's ARTCC with Santa Barbara and what is this? What's the date today? Sorry, Akron, I'm trying to get your raffle ticket. 723. Okay, so we got that uh, we got the landing right raffle ticket entered and we're good to go on that one. Just that one for tonight and uh, yep, okay, let's Sorry, I'm still, still learning the mouse layout here, guys and uh, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> Okie doke. Well, awesome. All right, let's. Uh... Let's finish this out. Who we had um, just a few moments ago? We had B Pain seven eight seven hit the follow button, and whatever man ninety four is with us as well. Thank you very much. For that, uh, we had some new folks stop into the chat as well. Optimus AU says, looking forward to going through your VATSIM intro videos. Optimus, thank you very much. Hope that you enjoy those. Any questions that you have on those, feel free to ask them right in the comments there. Um, yeah, so Pick a Five String says, the FOD team was going to go look for the parts I left on the runway. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> and then duct tape them back to my gear. So uh, yeah, so it was a little bit of a, a firm landing, but um, not not in the in the scheme of things, not too bad. I just have to obviously pull that power a little more smoothly um, than uh, than I did tonight. That's okay though. For a first uh, for a first time up, uh, not too bad. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for flying along. It is a uh, um, it was just a quick test flight. We're not normally on on a Sunday night. But the normal show schedule, for those of you new to the channel, is uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. That's 2300 Zulu time, at least it is during the summer months. I appreciate you riding along. Oh, Lauren, I will, yeah, don't, don't worry, I'll, 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 I'll get to those. Normally, if I don't do those during the stream, I usually do those first thing uh, once I close up the stream. I see, so I owe Johnny Kaput uh, six tickets, Bed Dave, and Lauren, I owe the three of you a... Uh, a set of six tickets. I'll take care of it. Don't worry. Um, but anyway, yeah. So uh, for those of you new to the stream, we have uh, our normal show schedule Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 2300 Zulu Time. And uh, that is the schedule we will be on this week, back to our normal schedule after being kind of disrupted for a few weeks. Uh, so tomorrow at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 2300, taking this very same A2A Comanche up into the Midway... Monday event up at the Chicago ARTCC. And I'll show you how to find 
events on the that USA calendar let's go to thatusa.net and you go to pilot tools well it's it's it's, it's that one there um, but let's show you how to get to it uh, even if it's the, not the same one events calendar under pilot tools and then you see tomorrow is obviously the 24th midway Monday 2300 Zulu which is perfect because that's our show's uh, start time anyway uh, they're gonna feature midway our uh, our plan for tomorrow is going to be to jump in at Gary, Indiana, just south and east of Chicago, and we're going to do some VFR flying up the coast on the along the uh, Lake Michigan shoreline, and we're going to try and spot uh, a whole bunch of sports related stuff. There's four stadiums along that shoreline that we're going to be looking out for along the way, and we'll see how well we can spot them in um, flights in 2020 while we fly this beautiful new A2A Comanche aircraft. And then uh, spin around and head right back down to Gary, Indiana. So a nice, busy VFR stream. Wow, there's a lot of IFR traffic coming in and out of Midway. That should be um, should be a fun one there. And uh, so hopefully you'll be able to join us for that. The full show schedule is down underneath the About tab. It's also over on our Discord server. At least it's published through the rest of July. I need to start working on the August one because that's coming up real quick. As far as we're, you know, coming to, um, coming to the point where we're two-thirds of the way through July already. Almost three-quarters of the way through July already. So, need to get that August schedule together for you. I will do that ASAP. Uh, but look for that down under the About tab or over on our Discord. Speaking of the Discord, for those of you who are new to the stream, if you were trying to interact with me earlier and I missed your message, didn't respond, please don't take it personally. You notice that I did completely hand-fly this plane from start to finish, and that is normally what I do on these general aviation style streams. That does mean that sometimes a message flies up through the chat and I don't see it. So uh, don't take that personally. Get on that Discord if you had questions or just were trying to say hi and, and much more interactive over there. I check on it more or less every few hours around the clock. Um, also some good information on the stream over there if you had questions about hardware, software, whatever. Um, you, know, you can usually find it in the uh, in the area under the About tab or over on our Discord. We're also on Twitter, Slant Alpha at Twitter.com, and that's where we keep you up to speed with the latest and greatest news in the flight simulation community, as well as in the VATSIM community. Uh, but also, just in case we ever have to make any adjustments to our show schedule, like the, the uh, addition of a surprise stream like tonight's, or but if we had to postpone because of technical difficulties or last-minute obligations or what have you, we're switching days to work another event into the calendar, whatever might be going on with the schedule, we'll let you know in that uh, Twitter as well. YouTube channel's on the lower left-hand side, and uh, we had one of our newer friends mention that tutorials playlist just a bit ago. That was Optimus. <coughs> you guys want to check that out. It's a playlist called VATSIM Tutorials over there on our YouTube channel, and it's got some good information if you're, if you're getting onto the VATSIM network for the first time. Excuse me, guys. Getting on to that sim for the first time and you need some help figuring out uh, what call sign to use or what equipment code is appropriate for you or um, how to read uh, charts, sectionals. I'm going to be putting up one soon on how to avoid some of the more common rookie mistakes on that sim. But uh, do feel free to check the, those out and uh, ask any questions that you have either right there in the comments or over on our Discord server. Happy to help. We try to be a very newbie-friendly community here uh, on the Slain Alpha channel. I'm 50 flying hours in, says Optimus, getting brave enough to start talking to others. Excellent. It is an addiction. But uh, please feel free to hit up those tutorials if there's anything uh, that might be useful to you. All right, and uh, hang on. Last but not least, well, let me uh, let me decongest a little bit. One second. All right, last but not least, if you're new to the channel, we've got two ongoing monthly raffles that we do on the street. Raffle number one is our Alphabets Points Raffle. That's the raffle that you can enter with the Twitch channel points right there at the bottom of the chat panel. 
the uh, alphabets points as we call them here, and uh, you got the alphabet serial icon that represents those. You got the button next to that that allows you to cash in 1,000 for one entry or 5,000 for six entries. We do those drawings toward the end of every single month. We did get off of sync, so we uh, we just did the June one. The uh, uh, so we'll be doing, we'll get back on sync and we'll do the uh, August one here at the end, at, toward the end of the month of August. Uh, but anyway, keep saving up those channel points, cash in 1,000 at a time for one entry, 5,000 at a time for six entries into that Alphabet's Points raffle. And we'll talk about the prizes here in just a moment. Raffle number two is the Landing Rate raffle. You saw how that worked. Akroner got the entry into that one. And, uh... When we do those drawings toward the end of most every month, we pull one winner from the Alphabet's Points, one winner from the Landing Rate Raffle, and each of the two gets their choice of any uh, item off of the Slant Alpha Prize Vault list. If you want some of the stream merch, you can choose our Slant Alpha t-shirt, ball cap, mouse pad, coffee mug, or tote bag. If you don't want any of my garbage, you can get some garbage of your own from Amazon. You can choose an Amazon.com gift card. Or you can get some <coughs> SIM stuff if you choose instead the explain.org store or SIM market gift card as your prize instead. So again, 1,000 uh, alphabets points for one entry, 5,000 for six entries. And uh, do those drawings toward the end of every single month, although the next one will be coming up at the end of August. All right, friends, that's going to wrap it up for us tonight. But we will see you again tomorrow, 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 2300 Zulu Time. In the meantime, who we're going to send this stream over to to uh, throw some raid love to? Hmm, who do we got? Who do we got? Oh, you know what? You know somebody I never get to raid because I'm not normally on Sundays? Very dear friend of the stream, Iowa Scotsman. We'll shoot you over to Iowa Scotsman. Getting ready to fly the uh, very same airplane we were just in, the A2A Comanche, and it's his first time. And he's doing one bought from auction, so he's going to find some interesting... <coughs> Pardon. He's going to find some interesting mechanical issues with his, so... Let's shoot you over to him. Looks like he's uh, still setting up controls and stuff, so... Get you over to him and... Uh, and uh, enjoy his version of the uh, A2A Comanche. And we'll see you tomorrow, guys. So be healthy and safe for the, for the very tail end of your weekend and start of your new week. We'll see you Monday night, 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 20th Zulu Time. In the meantime, be healthy and safe in your own travels and adventures. Good night, friends.